worth some pine shelves. Uh, I've got three of them. I just these are reclaimed. I got these the other day, um, and yeah, they were just nailed in. So I just I just ripped those puppies out, uh, which is fine. I've got one of these shelves as a split down the middle of it, but ordinarily I would use um, uh, plywood for this, but I haven't got any 18 mil ply, and I'm not going to glue up two kind of thinner pieces in order to do this because I want to try and get this done today. So um, I have also thought of a of a way I could possibly reuse these parts, which are the the sort of the the hanger bits um, as well. So we'll try and crack on and do that. But uh, yeah, so we'll use this and we'll see how we get on. Right then, campers. So these um, little cable tidies were at the back of here, and they were screwed in like so. Uh, I can't remember what was screwed in there. Was that part of the original fence? Quite possibly. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I've taken those off. Now these little nuts and bolts, or bolts rather, are M5. So I found some M5s and found some of these little, uh, little roofing bolts apparently are M5 as well. So that's good. Um, so we'll use those to go in there. However, what we do have to be careful with um, on both sides of this really is that through these holes that's where the threaded rod is to allow the the uh, the thickness the thickness of um, plate to move up and down so we can't go too long with these so we might have to pack out with washers and all sorts of things I am going to use a bit of uh, paper to see how we can get on with this and this is going to allow me to create a template of sorts so I can uh, so I can um, get the holes in the right place now pow i still can't say the name power sand pow whatever it is he does do a um a, a printable template that you can buy and uh, and that's that's awesome so if you want to do a little bit easier and probably more accurate then i would suggest doing that but for my case i'm just going to try and uh, make the best of a bad job Probably would have made sense just to pierce that, really, with a uh, with a bolt. But never mind. We live and learn. All right. So I should have four dots there. That should, in theory, um, match up with the uh, the threaded holes underneath. Now, what I've got going on here is there is a uh, the spring. which I think we're going to have to take into account. So something like that. So that's these springs here that tension the rollers. Uh, we've got... That is as far down as we can go. And that should... maybe be all right. Right now I'm going to use a centre punch to try and get into the middle. I'm going to probably oversize these holes a little bit so they don't have to be super accurate. I put that on the on the squiff a little bit, but never mind. As always, accuracy probably not necessary as long as it's smaller than the uh, space that we've got to play with. We should be golden. And that, don't know if that's going to come through on camera, is uh, what we've got. We've got the two things going down there. We've got six holes going across there. We've got this. So we'll cut this out. May as well do it all on the bandsaw, I guess. So I just cut that on the bandsaw and didn't record any of it. But, you know, it's not hard. Literally, none of those lines are straight. Do we care? Nah. The important thing, though, is will it fit? Nope. No, it will not. Right, so I've made that. Look at the state of that. Look, you probably want to spend more time on it than I do, but uh, there we go. So in theory, that should pretty much be what we need. So uh, I'm just going to tidy this up just a wee bit, and then I am going to drill out these holes. And uh, as, they're, as they're M5s, I might, well, I'll drill them out with a 6 mil, I think, and uh, we'll see how we get on. Well, my badly bad management meant that these roofing bolts can't be used because they're actually larger than they need to be. So I've got some other ones with an ill-fitting spring washer because I haven't got any regular washers to pack it out with. So we'll, well, you know, we're bodging. At the end of the day, if you haven't got the right gear, just make it work. Well, that's interesting. That one's tapped in at a, uh, a rather avant-garde angle. But there we go. 
I've just noticed that the originals came with some washers or had some washers on them so let's use those. I'm still going to leave the spring washer on this one because I feel that it might just about knock onto the uh, threaded bar behind it. If not, that is now on there. I did have to use a nut or sorry, a, a bolt instead of a screw on that one. And I preferred it because I could use the little socket set. So I may replace all these with uh, with little bolts rather than uh, rather than screws. Anyway, my plan now is to use these, which were the, the fixings for the shelf to pop them up there. And I've, I've got to make sure they're square first. But yeah, so the idea is they can I can have two sitting there, one and two, and then I can have the uh, the a flat piece going across there, and then we can have the fence coming off those. So that is that's the plan. I might not film the next bit just because I want to concentrate on what I'm doing, but uh, but yeah. That's, I think, what we're going to be going for. Okay, so my plan now is to pop a couple of washers. They're both a little bit domed, unfortunately, but make sure I've got a straight edge on this piece of wood, which is like that. Then I can move that onto the washers like so, and that gives me an even spacing underneath the wood along there. Then I will get my little fella going on there. I'll tell you what I am going to do, you know. There's a gap here, so I am going to actually come in and inset it a little bit. Hey, that's not a terrible idea. Okay, I might be having a moment. I just cut these uh, little insets in. I cut them both at the same time, so they're exactly the same. And that means that can fit in there lovely. And uh, this one will do the same. Just realise it's slightly problematic if this is a different height to this side. But never mind. Um, we can overcome that because that's a little bit low anyway, so I need to just move that up. And I've also... Oh, that was a terrible idea because I didn't cut them straight. On the table saw. Okay, so they sit pretty much where they need to, so I'll pop them there and I've drew, drawn around them so I can then pop them on here and then put the... Uh, put the, uh, the screws in from the back side of this plate into here. We'll pop two screws in, one there, one there, and that should hold that nice and straight. Then we'll pop a bridging piece between the two, and uh, we're getting there. Progress is being made. I've got a bit of melamine in between those two pieces there. I've cut another bit about the same sort of size, but that's nice and slidey. So I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna put two coach bolts through there with a uh, with a slidey sort of affair going on then what i will do is i will have i think this is possibly a little bit too on too big um whoops i think this is probably a little bit too tall but yeah i'll raise it off the bed ever so slightly um stick that on there and then maybe do some of that action or may i might cut some other uh uh, uh, 90 degrees for uh, for that sort of stuff to go on there like that and then in theory I can put two screws from the other side in at the bottom there and then I can if I need to I can shim behind here if I need to do any changes to make that make that square on the table obviously it has to be lifted off the uh, the, the, the deck a little bit as well so yeah we will uh, I'll have a little think about that Right, so I got a bit carried away without you on that one. Um, and uh, basically I just routed out two um, pieces along here. I've obviously screwed this section of wood into these. I've routed out two strips across there and single holes underneath. I've then put coach bolts through so you don't have to, uh, uh, they won't spin. And then I've just got to make some knobs so I can tighten these up because I haven't got any handles. But uh, if I loosen these a little bit, what that means is we can have access to more of the blade on the cutting surface than um, than we have ordinarily. So that uh, that is good. I would have made this a little bit longer so I had access to the full blade, but I didn't really pay attention. Shocker. 
Something else that I did is where I've got this fence, I've still got to attach it to the back, um, but I've got two uh, screws going into the base of that slidey bit behind us. And I used just a steel ruler, um, slid that underneath so I could put this flat piece on there. So I had a little bit of clearance from the deck here but that comes forward to about there so i've got you know some movement in the uh, in the table so i don't have to use the same part of the blade every single time i uh, i do any uh, planing Hey there and welcome back. You'll see I'm in different attire and that's because I uh, had, a, had about a week off because uh, the fibro really sort of kicked my ass. Anyway, we are getting back onto this today. I really want this series of videos to be over with, uh, as I'm sure you do if you've been watching. But uh, what I've done so far is I figured out a way of... Um, of uh, fixing this fence to the thing that we made in the uh, in the earlier part of the video so um in fact let me just grab the camera and then it's going to be easier if i just show you so what i've got going on here is i do have a couple of straight edges there's one there and then there's one at the back there hopefully you can see that as well i clamped a uh, a, 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 a level over the top of the pair of them and that hopefully will mean that they both stay straight and that means that I can then make sure that this section is lined up exactly where it needs to be and the reason I've got to do that is because you might see that there is a bit of a little gap going on right there so if the fence was just to go all the way back to it and I was going to tighten that up properly then um, this wouldn't be perfectly parallel to the uh, to the bed so the uh, the right angles there or the, the squares are in place to make sure this keeps exactly where it needs to be and then i'm going to shim the back of that put a couple of screws all the way through jobs are good and everyone's a winner let's find out if that's going to work Okay, so I've got a couple of little Moranti shims like this, and I've just stuck those at the back there, so that um, shims the uh, the back piece to the front. I've put it in reasonably snug, so it's not going anywhere, and my plan now is to drill through there, put some dirty great big screws in, and we will see if, uh, if that works. Might do. We'll find out in a minute. These, I think these are about an uh, inch and a half, something like that. Oh yeah, fuck. So that went through and just got my finger a little bit. So don't do that. Has it worked? Well, I would say so. That looks good enough for me. Now then, the problem with this is that the fence is, there is a little bit of movement in there, so I need to reinforce it at the back. But I'm not going to be putting too much pressure against the fence. It's going to be guiding things. The pressure generally goes down and making sure it goes along the top here. So I think we're going to be all right. All righty then, campers. So we've got the little... Uh, the little gadgets at the top there which has uh, cracked everything so what i did is i put another couple of um of shims in the sides there and then basically just added another uh, another screw in the middle is this a perfect thick fix no no it isn't but i don't see why, why it won't work also if you've uh, just seen those um those little green balls there they're uh, the little resin knobs that I've started making to use instead of star knobs and uh, and I'm into it I've got a bunch of them that I've made and uh, yeah there you go so the fence could do with another hole down here I think because if I uh, if I move that whoops you can see, if I move the whole fence you can see the back there is moving up and down there so I think uh, I think we might even move those move those knobs somewhere else but that's a job for another day it's an easy reason, reasonably easy fix that one so yeah that's uh i'm not going to worry about it because like i said i'm not going to be putting too much pressure on the angle of the fence um it's going to be more downwards than it is backwards 
but uh, it should be an easy fix. So that is about it. We've got a bunch of uh, screws in there. They're, they're flush, so they're not going to interrupt anything that goes on. Strengthening the back of it should be fine and dandy. Uh, I'm not going to show you it running today purely because I've got to change the blades out. I'm unsure if I'm going to make a video for that because there are already videos showing that on YouTube, but uh, who knows, I might make a, a super quick one. But all in all, we've made a fence. We've tried to make it quieter and learn some stuff on the way. Um, we've had a little look on the insides over the last few videos to understand exactly how this thing works and, uh, and what it's up to. We've lubed it with some dry lube. We've made all that happen. And um, we've made it run seemingly a little bit better. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, most importantly, we've replaced the fence. It's not perfect. But, you know, the, the, the words. <laughs> like I said before, there is the, the Pao San, um, Pao San, I don't know how you say his channel name, but his video on it is spectacular. And there is uh, plans as well. So you can go and get those and download them and be way more accurate than I was. Um, but part of this channel, is hopefully inspiring others to figure things out, to kind of not always look for a solution and try and to understand the solution yourself, you know, rather than someone else telling you. So me documenting my journey with this thickness planer, hopefully has encouraged you that, first of all, not all people on YouTube know what they're doing because, you know, um, but secondly, you know, if you take things a step at a time, if you take it down, you know, one brick at a time, you can get over the wall and understand exactly how things do work and then how you can improve them. This is just the V1 of this, uh, of this fence. I'm sure there will be others in the future, but that's how I've managed to figure that out. Try the soundproofing, flatten the beds to make sure they're co-planar and, uh, and do all the other bits and bobs that we've had over the last video. So if you stuck with me, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we've all learned something um, like not to mess around with it. <laughs> no, that you should go and give something a go. And as long as you don't break anything on the way, you can always put it back if needs be. So, you know, hopefully we've all got something out of this. Um, I, let's like say, I might show just, I might do a super quick video just changing the blades. Um, and if I do that, then I will show it running. But, uh, but yeah. Okay, thanks very much for sticking with you, gang. And uh, thanks very much for sticking with me, gang. <laughs> I'll see you very, very soon when we can actually build something. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Lovely. Might actually do a vlog as well. Anyway, see you later. <laughs>